Well, I've had several requests for a video on how I make my French puff pastry, which is kind of a housewifely thing. And it takes a few hours to do, but it's not difficult. And I'm not a pastry lover uh, cook. I'd rather just buy it ready-made. So this is one and three quarters cup of ordinary wheat flour with six tablespoons of ice water. And I'm going to add five tablespoons of melted butter and blend it in and there's just a pinch of sea salt in here. And then I'm going to take a rolling pin. I hope I can find it. Oh. Yeah. I have two actually. I couldn't find the first one for a while. So I bought another for first one was three euros. The the first one was one euro, the or ten francs. The second one was three euros. No big deal. I keep asking anybody, do you need a rolling pin? Because I've got an extra. And what you do is you add about another, oh, how many tablespoons is it? Oh, another ten tablespoons of butter to this, unsalted. And you keep folding it and rolling it and wrapping it in wax paper and every 30 minutes you go back and do it again and it's supposed to be done about five times minimum and pastry parrot one also told me put a few drops of apple cider vinegar in this and this will even help with the flakiness I find it doesn't hurt and you know you you just keep wrapping it in the same I use sulfurized paper and uh, you know, this stuff actually keeps for up to a week in the fridge, and it certainly freezes okay. You know. So, it seems like a lot of trouble, but once you've had a homemade puff pastry butter crust, you know... You just probably won't like the ready-made ones. And some of this uh, massive amount of uh, pig head I've got, and I, I'm cooking up the, the bones here with some water to see if anything happens with that. I roasted them properly. Um is just so good and you can use it for a sweet dessert you can use it for a savory thing like a pasty or you know a, a meat pie right um, and the, the, the flavor is just incomparable you know I did buy recently uh, one from the supermarket and my husband wouldn't even eat it and I don't really blame him because they have a very processed flavor that is kind of greasy. I can't really explain it. You know, ugh. So I'm going to try to get this butter in here. See, I haven't even measured it, but I the butter had a, a wrapper on it where I could kind of measure it. And I really shouldn't be using a knife. But I don't have a mixer. Sometimes I use my hands, but I usually use a wooden spoon. I've noticed that with uh, yeast things, this doesn't have any yeast in it. 
excuse me I've noticed that with yeast things you don't want to put any metal into it you don't want to I mean even this plastic bowl is a bad idea it's very unhealthy but you know you want to use glass probably or sometimes for egg things a copper bowl is very 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 nice and helps them fluff up and it's like this chemical thing and um, I have found that I've had trouble getting bread to rise not only because this kitchen is so drafty um, but also because I make the mistake of putting metal utensils in here and that can that can really kill the yeast I hadn't realized that but it, it, it does kind of make sense so this is going to be rolled out for the rest of the afternoon and some of this excellent uh, pig head I cooked I think is going to go in it with an egg wash. I've got some fresh mushrooms. I think my husband thinks I'm crazy and he's a bit fed up with me as usual but it doesn't matter. He hates my guts, you know. That's marriage, you know, the old ball and chain. Alright, see you